Welcome back. I'm pleased to be joined this morning by John Burr of the Jacksonville Business Journal, Fred Matthews with Examiner.com. He's a blogger for them. And also Roxy Tyler with WOKV. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us. We've got kind of a lively group today. All of you were just watching intently the Shad Khan <laughs> interview. I want to hear your comments on what he had to say. Who's going to start it? Who wants to go first? <laughs> well, I think... Uh, He's suffering along with the rest of us um, when he talked about the importance of having good people um, in an organization, whether you're making auto parts or whether you're running a football team. I think um, that kind of bodes towards some changes toward the end of the year. Fred, what do you think? Well, I, I think that, again, this is Shad Khan's team. Uh, we can call it the Jacksonville Jaguars, but this is his team, indifference to how we think about it. And I think he's looking at it from a business standpoint. He's also learning the game, the ownership game, which is going to be important going forward. So I, I don't think you know, fans are disturbed and, and irate about the loss, but it is a business issue is how he's looking at it now. But we will see some changes uh, because there has to be some changes once the season is over. Yeah. Yeah. I agree totally with uh, Fred, and we have to make some changes, obviously. And Sean Kahn's a smart enough guy that he knows that these changes are going to be coming. But right now, in the season, where we are right now, we've got to do the best we can with what we have and uh, keep Blaine Gabbard healthy enough to be on the field for a while. And hopefully Mojo will uh, get better really soon and we can get back on the field and start winning again. But it's going to be a tough game this weekend. What is the biggest change, Fred, that you would like to see them make? If you had to bet on it, what do you think he's going to do? Well, obviously, they've got to do something with defending the quarterback. They've got to do something with uh, the uh, pass reception. And they're going to have to get another running back. We're going to have to get another motor for this, another engine for this car we call the Jaguar. Because without those, at least those three things, we aren't going to be able to go forward. Mm -hmm. All right, let's uh, go ahead and move on to the CIA scandal this week. You saw our interview with uh, Dr. Dorenzo talking about powerful men and women cheating. What are your thoughts on uh, General Petraeus's affair, Roxy? Well, I, I think uh, that's been going on since the beginning of time. Uh, men have cheated on women, women have cheated on men, and in this case, it was both of these people were married. But I think the real important issue is not that, that there was an affair, was that what happened behind those bedroom doors as far as talking. When this is a CIA head of a CIA and then General Petraeus said today that, uh, yeah, he knew from the beginning that the attack in Libya was a terrorist act, but that's not what Susan Rice said. So I think the bigger issue is what kind of pillow talk goes on behind closed doors. I think that's the bigger issue. John? I'm, I'm not sure um, that he had to resign, be fired, or whatever happened. Um, I'm kind of of the, uh, the Bill Clinton mold. Like, I didn't, I didn't, I voted for Bill Clinton. I didn't marry him. And I thought Petraeus, and uh, I think everybody thinks Petraeus is, is of of his generation is just a standout general and he was doing a great job at the CIA. I'm not sure that having an affair was warranted him leaving. But that was his own decision. He felt like that and that violated military policy and that was one of the reasons why he said he felt he had to do that. So that was, yeah. and of course the president accepted his resignation. And, and you're right, I just hate to lose somebody of that caliber. Yes, I think we all do. Um, and he really is an exceptional guy. And you see this being played out in the hearings that are taking place, that have taken place this last week. Congress is, is not concerned with, the, with the, the issue of the affair. They're concerned with what happened in Benghazi, the results of that, who got the information where, because all of them have feet of clay. So I don't, I don't think that, I, I tend to agree with John, I don't think he, he had to resign, but being an honorable man with mm -hmm. 30 years of military experience behind him and knowing the officer's code, mm -hmm. he felt it imperative that he step away from this. It was a, a, a matter of honor, and he knew that he had violated that simple principle uh, that lower ranking officers get fired for. You, you're an officer, you have an affair, you're never going to get promoted. So this is something that was done out of honor, but it did not have to happen. Does it worry, make any of you worry about national, our national security? That, you know, he's having this affair, she 
could have had access to classified documents? No, no more than, than anything else. I mean, we, we, had a whole, we have a history of, of affairs taking place with presidents of the United States, uh, with uh, one president, that Dwight Eisenhower, of course, was in the same position. He was a general, had an, a long-lasting affair uh, with uh, one of the persons on his staff. It did not compromise national security when we were in the midst of the Cold War. And there's no evidence here that that's happened either. So I, I don't see it. I don't see it as a, as, a, as a major issue for us now. All right, we're almost two weeks out post-election, and Mitt Romney made some comments this week. He says Barack Obama won with gifts to blacks, Hispanics, and young voters. Roxy, your thoughts? Um, I think that he's just speaking his mind, which he has a right to do. Um, I think that he thinks that uh, President Obama's policies are not going to work for the future, and that's basically what he said. He said that we cannot go on the way we are and continue to mount this this debt okay. as it is without doing something. And basically that's what the president said it says look we're not going to you know do this on the back of the middle class and that's what Mitt Romney said too but a lot of times it's who gets their message out the best all right I need quick answers from John and Fred I think it kind of shows that when he was talking about the 47 percent that's what he was thinking and that is really the way he thinks I think these comments are all along the same vein that uh, there's a, a certain percentage of the population has their hand out Fred, He'll get a conversation with the president, but he won't get an appointment. And that's really the bottom line. He says, yeah, I mean, it's true. There were gifts given. The gift was, I'm going to do what I said I was going to do during the campaign. And that's what we're talking about. And most of us are still waiting for our gift. All right. Thanks, all of you, for joining <laughs> us on Action News Sunday. We appreciate it. And when we return, a moment with you.